So now I'm wondering, do I have worms for brains? Over. Take a look at the turnout at Trump events. He had over 100,000 people in New Jersey. By some estimates, far more than that because... <laughs> My Trump's estimates? The lineup of people getting into the event was thousands deep as well. Thou shall not bear false witness, Mike Johnson. <laughs> Trump's new spokesperson is the Speaker of the House. It's like third in line to the presidency. Now kind of the same as Alina Haba. <laughs> yeah. One thing that... We've all known. This summer, Cottage Core is out and Trump Core is in. <laughs> They're all so cute in their little costumes. Move over, Santa Con. <laughs> God, that's a real horrible would you rather. <laughs> you want to see people dressed as Donald Trump fucking in Dwayne Reed's? You can tell they're not pro-choice because they can't even choose the color of their tie. <laughs> <laughs> their ties are a little too, like, normal length. Yeah. They need to be at least four feet longer. Also, the weird rise of Doug Burgum. Burgeoning Burgum. We've all known as this was a sham trial, but when you have an opportunity to see it up close uh, and personal. You can see it's actually a scam trial. Yes, it is a trial about a scam. That's exactly right, Doug. Sham v. Scam. Wait a minute. It's not a scam trial. Like, a sham <laughs> trial would be like, okay, that's a thing you could say about a trial. It's fake. No one's getting scammed here, okay, Doug? <laughs> Just because words sound the same doesn't mean that... I'm trying to stand up for the integrity of words. That is an institution that yeah. is far <laughs> underrepresented. I just switched out the H and the C. It's super clever. <laughs> it's really a scram. As in, they better get out of here with this weaponized justice. We're all here today because of the uh, the circus of this trial. <laughs> You're the circus. <laughs> I'm just trying so hard to be the VP pick. Who's this guy? Is he in the running? He's wearing the costume. He's got the men's rights beard. <laughs> some detailing right there. Very clean lines. It's old Harrison Butker. Trump is an idiotic child who would pick someone based on what they're wearing if they dress like him, but they also know he's an idiotic child who would yeah. do that, and that's why they're doing it. It's Bachelorette. They all just need that Trump rose. The only thing more depressing than the environment of that courtroom is what's actually happening in there. It's straight out of a Kafka novel. Which Kafka novel? Letters to Melania? <laughs> they have totally transformed into insects, though. <laughs> this is my impression of a Republican watching, being like, Kafka, and then like looking it up and being like, how many pages is... No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Did he say Kafka? <laughs> in this dingy third-rate courtroom... With this is a two-story drab courtroom. The air is musty, the floors are old, tan, brown, linoleum, you know, remember those? What do they want from a government building? This is the weirdest <laughs> talking point. What happened to courts in America when every American was guaranteed a lazy boy chair for their hearing? <laughs> it really is just like a bunch of rich people being like, you live like this? I know. Wait till they find out what the other 99% of America's like. Yeah. It, you know, it's very bright in that court, actually. Not good mood lighting. It's very <laughs> harsh on my worst quadrant in my face. <laughs> it's also very cold. It's very cold. They got either air conditioning or something. <laughs> <laughs> or something. What would the other thing be? It's a doorway to the ninth circle of hell. <laughs> It's actually very cold. I was it freezing in there? Yeah, no, it wasn't actually. Oh. It was actually warm. <laughs> Did you not get the talking point? <laughs> He's a chilly old man. Could someone actually fill us in on the trial itself? This case is built on two things. It's built on a liar, a professional liar, and a whore. And I use that as a biblical Ooh. term because she's accepted money. <laughs> Ooh, T.W. Shannon, you're spicy. <laughs> T.W. Shannon. T-dubs. I mean, in both cases, he's talking about Donald Trump. Yeah. There's whores in this courthouse, whores in this court. I use that as a biblical Ooh. term because she's accepted money uh, for sex. Stormy Daniels is Mary Magdalene in <laughs> Donald Trump's persecution complex. <laughs> All right, well, let's check in and see what the outrage machine is up in arms about this week. Kamala Harris just wants to be one of the guys. One of the guys. So she drops an F-bomb. So infuriating. So Sometimes people will open the door for you and leave it open. Sometimes they won't. And then you need to kick that door down. Is she just trying to be one of the guys? Act like one of the guys and maybe drop the F-bomb. Only white men are allowed to swear at summits for diversity yeah. and inclusion. <laughs> Only men use the word fuck. Did you know that's Spornak? I don't think we have any examples of you saying that word. I'm not trying to be one of the guys, okay? I am your regional manager and you better fucking yeah. pay attention and listen to me. <laughs> I have no problem with a well-placed F-word if it's used sporadically and not often. Um, what? Sometimes I just follow the AP style book. Yeah. On that, uh, so. yeah. I'm a journalist first, all right? Excellent F-bomb. Yeah. Excellent use of the word fuck. Mm. If it's well-placed. Well-placed and sporadic. Oh. What'd you make of that? Lack of class. <laughs> <laughs> Lack of class. Yeah, Democrats are to blame for the coarsening of political discourse. She's supposed to be an inspiration to young girls. Just like Melania. Who gives a f 
about Christmas. President Trump has used profanity on occasion at rallies Quite and things. frequently. But in an official capacity. In an official when capacity, you, you can't do this. <laughs> By the way, if you zoom out, you see Kamala Harris was talking to Jimmy O. Yang, a comedian. <laughs> in this institution. An official Silicon Valley capacity. <laughs> Silicon Valley? Hey, five seasons. That's an institution. <laughs> yeah. Dropping an F-bomb. She is so edgy and cool. It reminds me of when Hillary Clinton went on The Breakfast Club. Because I can only compare women to other women. I was going to say. Or when Trump has panned to everyone. I don't get easily offended either, Sean, but this bothers me. <laughs> this is Biden yelling, fuck! <laughs> this is like the dad uh, whose kids are having a sleepover and comes down into the basement with his baseball hat on sideways and his puffy uh, uh, tennis shoes. Puffy and tennis shoes? With the kids doing <laughs> what are you talking about, Charlie Hurt? <laughs> Just one of those dads. Tennis shoes and then tries rapping with the kids doing karaoke. karaoke. <laughs> this is so to, specific. Rapping dad? <laughs> Rapping to karaoke? Kamala is just like that. She's trying to fit in. It's a sign of desperation. I know because I've tried. My kids hate me, Stuart. <laughs> I lost my kids in the divorce. I tried this. I tried the Mrs. Doubtfire thing. I've tried so many. I'm memorizing Macklemore lines. <laughs> there has to be some decorum. She stands up there kind of slurring her words. From the trad-ish podcast? She's obviously a trad wife. Look at the, like, the picture behind her is the worst version of D&D. &D. Somehow zero creativity in that fantasy image. I'm a princess in a tower. No face. No sky. No face, no sky, no problem. You do not expect her to be dropping the F-bomb. No, not not at all. But hey, here we are in 2024. 2024, where you go down the street and you can see fuck Biden flag. <laughs> if it's on a flag, it's decorum. It's not in an official capacity. It's a flag. It's just a bumper sticker. It's just a t-shirt. It's just a hat. It's a fucking loophole. All right, well, speaking of worms. No one was speaking of worms. Even so, let's go to RFK's brain worm. What part of your brain was it in? It was on my left side in the front. <laughs> and I can feel it. <laughs> you couldn't remember words? It was eating the words? What was this, a bookworm? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, I think the worm ate the part of RFK's brain that could riff. <laughs> It ain't the words for yes and and. At the same time, I found out that I had huge mercury levels. <laughs> <laughs> A host of horrible issues. A doctor told me at one point, you could lose 10 IQ points and you'll never know it. That's the slogan for his campaign. <laughs> Is this the same doctor that said Trump is healthier, healthier than, than what, what I, I am? So I don't know exactly where I got so it. Should we check in on our earthworm? Gleep, patch him in. Patching in. Oh, Worm FK Jr. How the heck are you? Alive. Everyone thinks I'm dead, so I'm just living off the grid for a bit. Living rent-free in RFK Jr.'s brain. By the way, I saw your cousins in Dune 2. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. The only way I can watch a movie is if this dolt host goes to the theater. What are you doing all day? Hanging out, eating some lobes, you know, living that lobe life. You know what they say, live, laugh, lobe. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice, like painted in cursive or something. Hanging over here in the corner. Is there a worm in your brain? Your voice keeps changing. <laughs> <laughs> it's Wormception. So was there something specific about RFK that made you choose his brain? Not really. It was just like super easy because he was always rubbing up against falcons. So do you work on the campaign? My primary duty is speech writing. Ask not what your brain can do for you. <laughs> Ask what you can do for brain worms. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's good. That's good. We choose to go to the brain not because it's easy, <laughs> but because it's delicious. Not because <laughs> the only thing we have to fear <laughs> is brain worms. I'm an FDR. And I'm just warning everybody about brain worms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Here comes Cheryl. I'm about to disassociate and pretend I'm watching Curb Season 2. I am Super Joe. Ashton Kutcher is going to pop and left to tell us that we've been pumped. I should be out campaigning now instead of sitting in a very cold courthouse all day long. Can we stop this cruel game and allow the boy to keep one shred of dignity? For God's sakes, I can't stand to see him in all this pain. You vicious bastards! Welcome to Club Condom. I don't know why it's called that. Jerry Seinfeld, welcome to my 90s era Nickelodeon haunted basement. So aside from blaming younger generations for ruining comedy, what's new? Uh... 
I'm reading a lot of Marcus Aurelius. Have you ever read uh, that? Are you about to tell me how often you think about the Roman Empire? He is a fantastic guy to get you to zoom out and go, all these things you're worried about is much smaller than it is that you make it. Even politics, even social movements. Yeah, I guess if money's no object and your rights aren't being taken away, why sweat the small stuff? Being told that by the emperor of Rome in 150 AD is a lot like being told that by a 70-year-old out-of-touch billionaire. Hiya, thanks for tuning in. If you like the show, help us keep this spaceship going. Subscribe to our YouTube channel or drop a comment. We read them all. If you really like the show, subscribe to our Patreon where we share bonus content that didn't make it on this episode. Okay, gotta go. Thank you. Bye.